Good morning, Year 4. Welcome to your Tuesday English lesson. I'm just about to share my screen with you. Could you pause the screen now and could you write today's date and learning objective, please? OK, now today we're going to be describing a character. Well, let's remember, remind ourselves what we did yesterday. Yesterday we started looking at a picture which is going to help us write a quest story this week. Yesterday we made predictions based on that picture. Today we're going to describe a character using an, um, a technique we'll show not tell. And tomorrow we're going to be writing an opening for our quest story. Then we're going to plan our quest story through and we're going to write it. Today you're going to imagine what character lives in this setting and why. You're then going to write a paragraph describing your character using a technique called show not tell. Now, yesterday you remember I read you my story or the start of my story and we had a character in it called Puella. Now, I'm wondering if you could make up your own character now. So as your starter today, perhaps you could talk about this with a, your grown up or with a friend. I'd like you to imagine who your character is going to be in your quest story. Is it a boy or a girl? What's the character's name? Why is your character living on this island? Are they alone? What problem does your character face and how can they solve this problem? Jot down some ideas now for your starter. You probably have a good idea because yesterday you did a story map, so you might have come up with some ideas about the problem already. Well done. Now we're starting to use, um, we're going to start to get ready to do some writing. Today we're going to be using a technique called show not tell. There's two sentences below which describe this boy Connor. Which do you think is the better sentence? Let me read them to you. Connor was scared. Connor's tummy started to churn and he was beginning to break out in a cold sweat. Which do you prefer? The first sentence is a very simple sentence. It tells the reader straight away what is wrong with Connor. The second sentence is a little bit more tricky. It lets the reader decide what is wrong with Connor. And I can use my detective thinking to guess that because his tummy is starting to churn and he breaking out in a cold sweat, that he is scared. The second sentence is a technique called show, not tell. When I want to show my reader something, but not tell them exactly, I want them to guess themselves. This te technique is a um, one that writers use to create a clear picture in a reader's mind. It makes the story much more interesting and allows the reader to fully understand how a character feels. Let's look at some more examples. Sadia felt happy. A simple sentence. Let's look at the one that uses show not tell. Sadia's eyes lit up as a huge smile appeared on her face. Alex was shy. Alex blushed and looked up at the sky. Sophie was angry. Sophie's face turned bright red and she started to clench her fists. This technique we're going to try and use in our writing. First of all, though, let's see if I've used any examples of show not tell in my story opening. I'm going to read it again to you and then we're going to see if we can find any examples of show not tell. Protruding from the middle of the murky yet calm river was a lonely rock. Standing on top of this was a wooden handmade house perched precariously on tilts. All around you could hear the birds singing their woodland song and the gentle breeze rush, rushing through the autumnal leaves. Crash! Another tree smashed to the woodland floor as yet more humans stole more of the already depleted forest to create more farmland for their crops. How will I ever manage to get food if they keep destroying the forest? asked Puella, the young girl who was stood in the doorway of the house. From miles away, she could hear the distant hum of the mechanical saws. Wearily, Puella sighed, let her shoulders slump and shook her head. Clutching the doorway, she glanced down at her worn and faded clothes. Puella's feet lacked shoes and her skin was tanned from the time she had spent fishing in the river and hunting in the nearby forest. Years ago, her father had been the leader of the tribe and she had worn the best clothes. Would she ever be reunited with her people and wear new, clean clothes again? Pause the video now and see if you can find an example of show, not tell, in my story. OK, now I'm going to take a highlighter pen now. I'm not going to see if I can find any examples. 
Let's have a look. I'm going to look to the bit where I describe the character. How will I ever manage to get food? Mm, let's look on. From miles away, she could hear the distant hum of the mechanical saws. Wearily, Puella sighed. Let her shoulders slump and shook her head. Here I'm using show not tell. I'm showing that Puella is disappointed and she's fed up. Her shoulders have slumped in disappointment and she's shaking her head because she doesn't approve. She doesn't approve of them chopping down more trees. I've also described the way she looks using a bit of show not tell. She's got, oh, <laughs> she's got warm and faded clothes. So that could be a bit of show not tell as well. I'm sort of trying to let the reader know here that she is poor. Her feet lack shoes, again, showing that she's poor. And her skin was tanned, showing the reader that she spends a lot of time outside. This is what I would like you to do today. I would like you to write a paragraph describing your character. And I would like you today to try and use show, not tell. These are the things I'd like you to write about. Obviously, tell me the character's name. And I'd like you to write a paragraph describing the character's appearance. What kind of clothes are the character wearing? What's the character's hair like? Then tell me about the character's skills. I know from my story that Puella is obviously a good hunter. Perhaps you can show me, not tell me, some of the character's thoughts, but you'll obviously have to think of them first. What is she or he feeling? What is she or he thinking? For these two, you should be able to use some show, not tell. You can always borrow some ideas from what I've written here or from my story. OK, I can't wait to meet your characters, so I look forward to reading all about them later on today. So remember to post your work to me on Classroom Dojo.